All right, good evening, everybody. Um, welcome to the Tuesday, February 16th, uh, 2021 uh, Board of Selectmen meeting. Uh, we'll start the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. If you see us all stand and looking at our chests, please excuse us. Um, I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States of America, of America and to the Republic, Republic which, which stands, stands and one nation, one nation under, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with, with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for all. all. Thank you. Good evening again. Um, we're going to start with uh, citizens' input. I know we do have at least one person who's uh, zoomed in uh, under the citizens' input. Um, Christina, is there only one? Yeah, just um, so uh, Seth Ferguson. Seth, how you doing? Good, good. Thanks for having good me today, tonight. Sure. Seth, good to see everybody. Good to see you. You're up. Oh, okay. Um, so. <clears throat> Again, for the record, um, South Ferguson, 23 Bird Street. Um, good to see everybody. So um, what I wanted to just bring in front of the, um, the board was something that I noticed over the last couple of snowstorms this winter. Um, as I've been around town, and it's primarily been in the uptown in the common area, um, but I noticed quite a bit of blocked access ways and walkways. Um, so I'm thinking about... Um, on the common, uh, as you come around before the um, the car parts store, I can't remember the, the name of the place um, that's that's right there, but I believe that sidewalk has been blocked for a week or two, and it was in the previous storm. Um, in front of Union Straw on the Mechanic Street side, that's been blocked off. So if you've been up and around the common or other parts of town, you've probably noticed that there's been sidewalks that either are untroubled by the, the property owners um, in front of the, or at that particular location, or there's been plows that have been plowing snow up onto sidewalks and in effect blocking blocking the sidewalk. So that, you know, if you're on the common and you're trying to, you're trying to walk around the common, you might have to either um, walk into the street um, or climb over a sort of a, a snow bank, um, if you will. So, so there's a couple of things with that. Um, one is safety. So, you know, when I was talking to um, Docker, you know, maybe last week or whatever, um, you know, if there's children or um, seniors or people with pets or something and they have to walk out into the street, um, that's that's a safety issue. And then and then secondly, maybe less of less of importance is just how what kind of you know walkability we want to have around town and in our business district and being able to get from you know, park in one area and, and walk to a different, slightly different location. You know, so some there's limited parking in some spots. So we want to be able to say, you know, you can park here with re relatively easy access. Um, but if some of those places are, you know, those walkways are blocked, um, that can be a challenge. So I just, I just something I wanted to to bring to the board um, and, and put to you folks and just get your sort of your sense of what you think about that. And maybe some steps that we might take to rectify some of the issues that that we're having if you guys think there's there's an issue at all but i'll, I'll stop there and let, let let you react to that um <clears throat> thank you seth you know generally under uh, citizens input uh because it hasn't been listed there's not a lot of discussion that that okay can take place but having said <clears throat> that um you know myself also being down a downtown person like you are um there are times where it takes it seems like it takes a while to clear out certain areas of the downtown area. And for example, the uh, north side of the rotary, there was really no exit uh, out, of the, out of the last storm until yesterday. Um, so you, you could even go clear across and there was no way to get out without going over a you know three and a half, four foot mound of snow. So uh, I hear what you're saying, Seth. I think we've got to forward this to um, DPW. Uh, Bill, what do you think? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So uh, I'll just uh, give a brief response to that. First of all, uh, thanks for bringing it to our attention. But uh, just a couple things. One, the, you know, people recall that the last week or two was a pretty uh, difficult week because we had storm after storm after storm, which which made it difficult for us to get, get to the sidewalks as a priority in all areas. So the way I understand it is that that the, prior, the priority routes to sidewalks are those that lead to school routes. And so they try and get those first. 
That's why you'll probably see some of the other areas getting any attention later on. Uh, that said, that there is uh, still quite a few areas in the downtown that could probably be addressed sooner. If uh, if we get, and a lot of times what we do is we'll we'll clear the whole downtown area if it gets to a certain point where it becomes uh, uh, very difficult to pass, and which you know it's getting to that point. It looks like it, uh, the work's going to do that. So that requires. Uh, a couple of things requires a lot of time to usually be done at night because you can't get that done during the day because it's too much interference with the traffic. And the second thing, of course, it's it's costly to do that to try and remove it from the area, uh, which is another consideration as well. So that just having said that, it's I'll, I'll certainly take it up with Chris Gallagher and uh, their crew because I know they've been really out straight trying to keep up with all the storms they just recently had. And of course, the past few days have been a little challenge with the ice. So I we will uh, I will certainly take it up. I'll have a meeting with him. I have a meeting with him tomorrow morning. I'll take it up with him, and uh, certainly welcome to have anybody's input, including you, Seth, if you want uh, to, to uh, weigh in uh, as to you know some of the priority areas that you'd like to see done as well. Yeah, that sounds great, Bill. And I, and I one simple thing that I would I would mention, and I mentioned mm -hmm. that um, you know, and it's, I looked at the the bylaw quickly um, around snow removal, mm -hmm. and it, it mentioned that there's some parts of um, with it, with the sidewalk plow, there's going to be some areas that are not um, won't be able to be cleared because the plow can't fit through. So, in other words, if you mm -hmm. have there's a tree on the common um, that the plow right. can't get through. Um, so it's it would almost be better if rather than pushing right up to the tree and leaving a three or four foot pile, they just mm -hmm. leave that uh, as it's you know as the snow falls almost because then it's at least the people walking can crunch it down kind of you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this just is just one of those kind of simple things I was thinking about, but right. I appreciate the time and that that sounds like the right um, next step. So great, um, happy to happy to join again or uh, you know part in that conversation uh, if it arises. But just wanted to yeah, we'll, still, we'll, try, we'll do the best we can to try and address it. Thank you. Great, thanks a lot. Thank you, Sean. Um, I think that's it for uh, citizens' input. Uh, we'll go next on the agenda: um, uh, COVID nineteen update. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just wanted to say that um, um, meeting on a week on the at the meetings each week, the each uh, other week now, we're going to be getting these reports directly from Matt Brennan, the new director of public health, and he's given me his uh, report for that for the tonight's meeting as well. Uh, the vac the this is vaccination update. Uh, the Massachusetts Department of Public Health reports as of February 11th. Uh, a total of 950,515 vaccinations have been administered within the state, and that 229,906 of these vaccinations have been administered within the last seven days. As of February 11th, all groups in Phase 1 and Group 1 in Phase 2 are eligible to receive a vaccine. The next order of priority is Phase 2 of the state's vaccination plan are individuals over the age of 65 and individuals with 2-plus comorbidity, comorbidities. More information on these groups estimated uh, this estimated timeline for vaccination is forthcoming. The state is continuing to add appointments at vaccination sites statewide. Last week, a total of 53,000 new appointments were posted at mass, mass, at mass vaccination sites across the state, including Gillette Stadium. In addition, last week, approximately 50,000 pharmacy appointments were added through the federal retail pharmacy program and another 14,000 appointments were added uh, at the community health centers. The town of Foxborough contributed to that effort by vaccinating 160 eligible residents last week. The vaccination appointments can be scheduled in multiple ways, online by, 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 by visiting www.mass.gov slash COVID vaccine, or through your local participating retail pharmacy, or you can call 211. The closest participating, participating Retail pharmacy is CVS located at Two Roach Brothers Way in Northeastern, which schedules appointments online through www.cvs.com. Lastly, to support more of the 75 year old and older population getting a, vac mass, a vaccination site, such as Gillette Stadium, effective Thursday, February 11th, an individual who accompanies a person age 75 years or older to a mass vaccination site will be eligible to receive the vaccine as well if they are if they have an appointment booked at that time. Now that's a that's a new variant that was just introduced introduced uh, the past few days. Uh, COVID variant nineteen variant update: the Mass Department of Public Health announced nineteen additional cases of the B one one seven COVID variant 
bringing the total number of cases in Massachusetts to 29. The first case in the United States was identified in late December of 2020 and in Massachusetts on January 17, 2021. The B117 variant is, no, is known to spread more easily and has caused a rapid surge of cases in places like the UK, several other countries, and in parts of California and, and, and uh, Florida. The best defense against uh, the community spread COVID-19 variant is, is, a prevent, is a prevent the spread COVID-19 altogether. New information from the CDC guidelines shows that improving the fit and filtration of masks helps reduce the spread of the virus. Other critical public health measures help prevent the spread of the virus as well, including social distancing, staying six feet away from each other, avoiding groups, staying home when you are sick, getting tested if you are you have, a symptom, have the symptoms, or if you are identified as a close contact, and by getting vaccinated when it's your turn. Now, on the, on the COVID-19 testing update, currently the town of Foxborough is in the red category. The town's daily average incident rate is, is is high at, at 41.2 cases per thousand per 100,000, which is lower than last week. Uh, in addition, the percent positive rate is, is high at 5.36%, which is lower than the last week as well. These numbers have been continuing to decline despite being in the, in the high risk category. I will note that today's numbers as of, uh, as of this evening are at 55 cases locally in Foxborough. That's a rather significant jump for where it was um, we're down to about, uh, which means that we'll probably be in the yellow probably within another week or so, um, because of the fact that we, our numbers are trending in the right direction at this time. So we're clearly coming off the holiday, uh, gathering scenarios where we had a lot of, uh, COVID, uh, vaccine, COVID cases occurring. We're now at a point now where we're trending in the other direction, which is quite good to see. And more and more people becoming vaccinated, which is another good sign as well. So I want to thank Matt again for that, that update and that report. And also the fire department for the providing the latest information on the uh, on the uh, on the va- dashboard that they provide for us uh, on the status of cases here in, Fo- in Foxborough itself. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Bill. Um, Is there, could I add something to the COVID report? Sure. Um, I just wanted to say that um, I don't know if anybody else has gone up to Gillette if they've brought anybody or if they qualified for a vaccine, but. Um, Last Thursday, uh, the first round up there, I wasn't able to get an appointment for my parents, but um, when they they loaded the second round, um, I was able to get them in last Thursday. Um, They're 81 and 86, so I was glad to get them up there. Um, What we were in and out, um, it was just, they had everything so organized up there. Bill, have you you been up there? Yes, I have. I've been up there a couple times, actually, and it's really, really well done. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, very, very well done. And unfortunately Mm -hmm. for me, they announced the companions Wednesday and Mm -hmm. our appointment was Thursday. So I did go on to see if I could get an appointment, but I couldn't. But um, I was able to I will be able to get an appointment, uh, get a, a vaccine when I bring them back for their second shot. And um, but it was, uh, you know, really, really well done. I mean, I know the um, the craft organization is not, you know, uh, involved with the actual vaccine process, but the whole thing from pulling up, getting in, everything flowed very, very quickly, very helpful. Um, my parents were thrilled. Everybody was really nice. And so um, on both ends, it, I think it, it's it's very, very well done. I just want to, to add that I had been out there myself and brought my parents through and um, well, well done. I know, I know there's a lot of complaints and they're not, you know, the vaccines aren't getting out quick enough, but they, they were doing a great job up there and, and they deserve a lot of credit for what they were doing. So I just wanted to add that. That's all. Thank you, Steph. Thank you. Um, next on the agenda is uh, the Historic District Commission uh, new appointment. So uh, I think maybe Tom, you're going to uh, tell us, oh, you're on mute. How's that? There you go. Now we can hear you. Sorry. Ah. Yeah, so what we we were here a few weeks ago, um, and we're we're back to uh, bringing forth a, a fifth member who's an architect. I mean, we still have a lot of potential uh, things happening on in, in Baker Street, including from eight, eighteen Baker Street, which is still an ongoing ongoing issue there involves the planning board as well. But um, today, we wanted to introduce uh, Sean Barrett who I, I guess is online. I don't see his, his face. No, Sean's there. I'm, I'm here, Tom. Okay. 
So Sean, I guess um, you're you're on. You can tell tell the board a little bit about yourself and 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 why you want to join us and and so forth. Sure. Uh, as Tom said, my name is Sean Barrett. My wife and I have lived at 347 Central Street for about five and a half years now, uh, both from the Massachusetts area. Uh, about a year and a half ago, we opened our own architecture firm that we've been operating out of the town. And particularly on my side of the business, uh, I've got a lot of experience with historic properties. Uh, primarily residential work is my my type of architecture, and I've been looking for a way to get back to the community. So when Trish and Tom reached out to me to, to see if I was interested in this board, it seemed like a good fit and a good opportunity. Great, thank you. Um, any uh, questions from the board? No, we've yeah. been seeing your face more and more, Sean, and I think your wife was just appointed mm -hmm. to yeah. a committee too. So it's it's good to see you guys getting more involved, You know, past the housing production plan and any way that you can help. Yeah, Bethany is on the Housing Authority Commission. All right. Yeah. All right, uh, Steph, no other questions? You're on mute. There you go. All right, motion to appoint Sean Barrett to the Historic District Commission for a term to end May 1st, 2023. Second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Under discussion, I think this is a group that could use some help online. There's um, members kind of listed that go back, like I know Joy Titus hasn't been on in a while. So just as I think we've kind of cleaned it up now and they've got their their five members, it's probably a good time to go in and, and work with them to get their page updated so that it all reflects accurately. That's a good idea, yes. This is Trish Selby. I've, I've been working with Christina and, and chatting with a couple other people and we are actually working on it, but. Christina, despite appearing to be superwoman, is only one person. So I we've been throwing a lot of stuff at her from more than one council right now. So she knows. We just wanted to get everybody on before we had her change it twice. So do you, are you guys one short or is, is five? Are you looking? Well, five is the official number. We, we're allowed to have uh, two or three alternates as well. And, and you know, if we have some other people, we'll we'll let you know. But five is the, is the number. Nice. I think I think we're due to report to you in some way who our current officers are and and all of that. And that's definitely not my department. But we have we have a chair and a vice chair and vice a chair. secretary. The secretary, correct? Yeah. And then we have me and Sean. Yeah. Okay. Um, roll call vote. Chris, yes. Stephanie, yes. Mark, yes. Ed, yes. Leah, yes. All right. Congratulations, Sean. Thank you very much. Thank you. All righty. Good night, thank Tom. Thank you. Good Chris, thank you. All righty. Um, we're, I think, uh, no, we're right on time. Um, 720, uh, Shaking Crab. Uh, they're looking for an all alcohol common Vic and seven day uh, entertainment license. Um, are the representatives from uh, the Shaky Crab here? Yes, good evening. My name is Mei Hui Hu. My client and the proposed manager is also here, Nicholas Wu. Hi, I'm Nick. Hi, Nick. Yeah, we can see you both. So, um, so the Shaking Crab, we did a little bit of research, uh, <laughs> at least myself and Bill and Christina um, the other day. Why don't you tell us, uh, Nick, hey, Doc. A, little, a little bit about it is a public hearing, too, just a reminder about opening that and reading the. I apologize. You're right. That uh, uh, does have to be done. Um, do you have that in front of you, uh, Steph? Nope, you're on mute again. Hmm. I don't, but. Um, I have. Do you want me to read it? Yeah. OK. So uh, thank you, um, Leah. The Board of Selectmen, acting as the local licensing authority pursuant to MGL Chapter 138, will conduct a public hearing on Tuesday, February 16th, 2021, beginning at 721 in the gala meeting room, or virtually, let's say, because we're all virtual tonight, Yeah. Um, on the application of an on-premises annual all-alcohol restaurant license authorized by Special Legislation Chapter 286 mm -hmm. of the Acts of 2016 for SC Fox Row LLC doing business as Shaking Crab, for Foxborough Boulevard, Foxborough, Mass., Manager Nicholas Wu. 
Additionally, licensee requests approval of a common VIC and seven day entertainment license for established hours of operation. All interested parties are welcome to attend. Thank you, Leah. Um, so um, we do have a all alcohol license that's available for them. Uh, Nick, tell us a little bit about the uh, restaurant. Tell us a little bit. I, we know where you're going to be at, but let everybody else know uh, where the um, place is going to be and a okay. uh, little bit about yourself. Okay, of course. So uh, we actually, um, the Chicken Crab is a seafood restaurant, which is, is a Cajun uh, style that is originally coming from the South. And we, we think it's a, it's a wonderful feat that is actually for the town. And uh, we did some research and there was no such a similar food as in the Foxboroughs. And then we would like to actually bring this kind of food into the town for the, for the uh, communities. And uh, again, we are full uh, service restaurants. So the alcohol is not something that we are really, it's uh, um, the best, um, I would say actually probably normally we'll have like 10% of the, of the alcohol selling. And the most of the time it's just actually the food and the majority are seafoods. And uh, for the location is right next to the uh, Fox Crossings and uh, it's by the um, Starbucks. I think uh, it was pro, uh, formerly, is, uh, I think it's called, it's a Mexican uh, restaurant. And we're going to just uh, uh, do some small renovations and turn around and make, make a new uh, chicken crab locations. For me, I'm a, uh, um, I'm data analysis. And uh, I, I actually have all the license and then I actually liquor license managers. And uh, I think I'm, I'm, I will be a good fit for this, uh, for this position. Okay, just so those, uh, so you're gonna be in the old Moe's uh, Yes, Moe's, yes, Moe's. exactly. Okay, yeah. uh, down in uh, Foxfield Plaza. Yes. Um, and you've got all the certifications uh, you said? Okay. Yes. Uh, any questions from the board? Yeah, Doc, I've got one. Nick, you just mentioned you're going to do some small renovations before you open. On yes. the application in front of us, it says that uh, you don't have a building permit and you're not doing any re any, any renovations. So well, the renovation we're talking about is actually the painting the walls. So normally, we, we did a check with the building departments. So they're saying that if you only print in the walls, you know, I should require to have a building permit. Okay, so nothing no renovation work that would require a building permit? Well, the, actually, uh, when Mo left, uh, it's pretty much everything was there. And uh, that's why we actually picking the locations. I think it's uh, it's actually, um, it's already a, uh, a perfect location for chicken crab. We don't really need to do too much. So during the pandemic, open a, uh, a restaurant is not a great idea, but uh, this is actually an opportunity we, we're willing to step in because again, there's not too much initial investment to involved to open Shin Crab because everything's already there. Okay, all right, I, and I actually commend you for for starting a business during a pandemic. Uh, good on you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Am I missing the alcohol application? I see the Common Vic and I see the entertainment and I see the workers comp and I see all the backup, but I don't see that one license, that application. I could just be missing it. It's a it's a kind of a big packet. So let me know. It it should be there. This is Katie. Um, it should be there. It's it's the largest of the documents. I couldn't combine them all because it was. Um, I just couldn't send it to Christina in one PDF. So I just, Chris, do you see it? Um, no, good point. I don't. Um, Unfortunately, I don't see it either. I, I can I can see who the area where it looked like it was going to be in, which is the public hearing, shaking crab, and all alcohol license uh, issue. Um, it, it didn't it didn't con get connected to that into the uh, the public hearing notice. Yes. So we. I mean, I know you. It sounds like you guys have turned it in, but I don't see it here or the board. <laughs> Yep, it's something that I can add. Um, I'm sorry that that was missed. It, it is incomplete um, application that was sent in to us a couple couple weeks ago. It, it is a complete application, right? Yes, that's I can actually upload it if you just give me a couple minutes. I apologize. It was something that was sent uh, not via 
um, email. So I apologize for that. And I will get that uploaded ASAP. So the kind of what I was going to go look is, you know, Nick, have you ever managed, you know, a liquor license before? Are you tip certified? Like those pieces that go along with the liquor license, if you can talk to us a little bit about your experience or if you don't have any yet, what you've done to prepare for this new, you know, arm of the business. Yes, I actually, um, so when the first time that we opened one uh, shaking pot at Newton, Massachusetts, and um, I was actually the list as the liquor, liquor license manager over there. And of course, when we actually start going, uh, opening more times, and then actually I start taking off. And uh, so we have a manager right now managing that location. And uh, so, yes, I actually, I had a, about uh, two years of the uh, working experience with the liquor license, and we've been very care careful about serving the alcohols. Mm -hmm. um, any other questions from the board? Mr. Chairman, um, yeah. I, I, do, I do have one question. I was I was by that location today, Nick, uh, to take mm -hmm. a look to see if any work has begun. Have you have you uh, are you looking to get started? How, what, what's your timetable for getting started over there? Um, I think the uh, our lease is contingent on the liquor license, so I'm thinking actually right now if we get a a yes from the board and that we were thinking actually start doing some um like works um on the on the property right now but i think that time timeline will be sometime uh late of this month and uh, hopefully we can finish the paintings by uh -huh. march and maybe open the door get ready and by april uh that's my best hope okay all right thank you um, and just and just so you're aware, you know, I think you know how this works. But the, you know, tonight is the first step in terms of the process, more or less, of getting the board. If the board approves, and then gets sent to the ABCC, and then they will they will do their process, and that takes a few weeks to get through that. Uh, just so you know, and as soon yes. as we get it back, obviously, you can we can you can officially proceed. But but as long as you have the, the approval from the from the town, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's rare that anything happens that uh, that, that will change that decision. Thank you. Um, I think, whoop, hold on, sorry. There we go. All right, just minimizing that. So um, do we want to hold off on a vote till we get those downloaded? Um, we have them now. The only thing yeah. that I know, yeah, if you refresh it, you can see it now. So the my only question now that we can see it is on section... On the section of the liquor license where it talks about 6B previously held interest in alcoholic beverage, it says that there's none. I'm sorry, will you say that again? On section 6B of the application, it asks about previously held interest in an alcoholic beverage license. And, you know, there's nothing listed there, which I think he just let us know that he did have a liquor license before. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not under my names. We actually partnership. So the another one is actually under my partners. So this is actually the first one under my names. If if I may, um, I I think um, you are referring to section six A, in an alcohol beverages licenses. I was referring to section six B. I see the list on six A. But if he's saying, sure. it sounds like Mr. Wu is saying he was never named, so it would be accurate then based on what he's saying. It's a first time liquor license in, in, in your name. Yes. In terms of uh, preparing these applications, they, they sometimes can be quite confusing. I think from my perspective, when I fill out this application, any existing licenses will be disclosed to Section 6A, uh, which uh, Nicholas does have uh, quite a bit of a... Uh, participation in um, in a few licenses, which is, you know, disclosed in 6A and attachment to, uh, to supplement 6A. 6B, from my understandings, are the licenses that have been uh, terminated or business that have been sold that he owned in the past. Uh, that's why there is none, uh, because all his licenses are ongoing business. None of them have been sold or terminated. And therefore, 6B is left blank. Okay, so, that clarifies so, it. Lily, did you see there was 6A uh, section down below that says he was 
involved in a beer and wine license in several different locations, uh, Cambridge, Boston, Brookline, Quincy, and Newton. Um, the, the, the question that, that would draw from that is that, have you had any experience with an all alcohol license? And you uh, yeah. mentioned Milton, which is not listed here. That's why I had asked. Yes, actually, the license we uh, we have actually the all the uh, all uh, uh, alcohol licenses, not just actually beer and wine. Full liquor license. Which location? All of them. And is there a Milton one? Because that's not on the attachment. Milton? No, we don't have any location in Milton. Oh, okay. I thought you said something. I thought you said Milton. Yeah. Oh, I, I said in Newton. I'm sorry. That's Newton. Newton. Okay. Oh, in Newton. Newton. Sorry, my, okay. my, my, yeah. Yeah, Newton is a full liquor license. Yes. Okay. I, I misheard miss you. All right. And, so, Bill, um, do we need that clarified on the application at all, or? Yeah, it it, does, it is a little misleading because it says just beer and wine on all the all the uh, the references to your alcohol service. So, I think it would be good to to clarify that and clean that up to to say alcohol service because it's it's misleading. If it's misleading to us, it's going to be misleading to the state as well. Okay. I will uh, make that correction. Thank you. And uh, I guess the uh, only other thing maybe to add, uh, usually this was Dave Feldman's thing was uh, Fox Cares. Um, Nick, there's a, there's a program in Foxborough and you can ask uh, uh, Katie uh, at, uh, at another time, but there's a called Fox Cares. And it's a group of uh, people like yourself that get together and just um, talk about uh, issues and legislation and uh, uh, best practices for uh, 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 restaurants with uh, that hold liquor licenses. Okay, well do. Yeah. Um, any other questions? Um, yeah, and just yeah. um, I, I, I think you said you you've had a lot of experience and no issues, but so um, in your other locations, no violations with any of your other uh, establishments. So far, no. Okay, perfect. And um, and all the. Um, all the employees will be TIP certified as well. Yes, it's a it's a requirement that they need to get a tips and before they serve in the all calls. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions from the board? No, nope. I'm satisfied. I'm okay. Um, entertain a motion to close the uh, public hearing. Motion. I make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Chris, yes. Stephanie, yes. Mark, yes. Ed, yes. Leah, yes. Okay. And now we'll take uh, motions. Do those, um, do each of the licenses have to be separate, Bill, or can they all be lumped together? Uh, you really should act on, on separately, uh, Mr. Chairman. I think it's, there are two, there are three licenses or two? Three. At, uh, one's, uh, one's a common all VIC, all the, common the other one's. VIC in the seven day. The seven day, right? They should be acted on separately. Okay. We so. haven't done it that way before, actually. Oh, we we can do multiples at once. It's fine. Yeah. Like we do the whole license renewals in 2021 as a batch, so we can do it as a batch the way it's listed out. It lists all alcohol, common vic, and entertainment Perfect. license. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just want to make sure we did it right. And then, okay. then there you go, Steph. The way it's uh, written. Okay. And so, so so Bill, we'll we'll make the motion, vote on it, and then the cleaning up of the application can happen afterwards. Right, Katie will follow up with that. Okay, okay. perfect. Thank you. All right, motion to open. Wait a minute, hold on, <laughs> wrong one. Motion to approve the 2021 all alcohol, common vic, and seven day entertainment licenses for SC Foxborough LLC DBA, a shaking crap. Second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Chris, yes. Stephanie, yes. Mark, yes. Ed, yes. Leah, yes. Congratulations. Good luck, Nick. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to town. Welcome to town. Thank you. Welcome to Foxborough. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. So in our uh, rotating uh, department head updates, uh, we have our uh, new um, building uh, commissioner, Barry Ringler, uh, going to give us a uh, update on what's happening in his whole uh, two months of being uh, uh, our building uh, commissioner. Uh, welcome, uh, Barry. Uh, don't forget you're on mute. 
Am I on mute now? You're off mute no, now. You're good. You're good. Good now? Yep. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So you're up. I'm up. Okay, yeah. Again, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, a couple of months here has been great, uh, great town. Uh, the update here is, you know, business as usual. Permit applications are coming in for plumbing, electrical, gas, mechanical, building, of course. And they're going right out uh, regularly. We're doing our inspections and uh, we're doing our inspections of all the town owned buildings as well. Like the Burrell School is getting close to doing its phase three over there. And uh, that's moving along really smoothly. They put a big push on a project to have the front main entranceway opened up uh, rather than going through a temporary uh, way to get out of the building, a lot narrower, a lot smaller. Uh, so they ha had, uh, uh, you know, uh, added more people to the site and moved it right along. Now it's moving even further. Uh, they also came up with an idea of instead of replacing the piping down the center of the hallways, which they initially were going to do, they decided to do it in another way that's not going to be tearing up the main hallways, which helps to have the process move faster and better um, with that project. Uh, up at the Patriots Stadium there, there's a new permit that was issued for a new building. Uh, it's a, a known as a, a wind tunnel, which is a, a tall building. It's actually as tall as a skyscraper, a, a high rise, which some people would call a skyscraper, you know, <laughs> scraping the sky. <laughs> but that's that's going to be happening. Uh, so that's exciting. And uh uh, you know, they're, they're doing a lot of uh, renovations to the stadium up there as well. And, um, you know, our, our meat and potatoes, kitchens and bathrooms have been coming along regularly. And, and uh, the department's been moving very smoothly. And we've actually taken the online permitting uh, further. So we, uh, we're setting it up now that you can get to your permits and apply for your uh, permits all on your phone. Right now, it's, it's not possible. Uh, but it is coming that you'll be able to apply on your phone and get to your permits on your phone rather than uh, the requirement and the need through the system to be at your PC. So it's getting more and more friendlier. There's a lot more people that are more willing to do it online than to come up to the building department, which helps to reduce the amount of people we have coming in the town hall with respect to the coronavirus and also keeps the workload in the building department down um, as in written paperwork that used to come in that our department would then have to put together. Uh, now that's not happening. Now it's just all online and the user is doing it themselves, much more productive office. And um, uh, it's just a lot better system that's really starting to shine. Any questions? Yeah, any questions from the board? Uh, Leah? So, um, welcome. I, I know you're stepping into a role that's turned over quite a bit recently. And, yeah. you know, I, I'm always, you know, I, I want to be sure that things are smooth for our residents and our businesses. So, absolutely. You know, as you settle in, you know, just thinking about you know, continuity plans, if you were to ever go out, I can think of one or two things in town that have been maybe a little frustrating, you know, because of the turnover and a couple different people in the role. Um, so, you know, just keeping that in mind as you move forward for our businesses and residents that, you know, you could be working on a project and essentially be on your third, um, you know, building commissioner in, in a rather short time. So. Yeah, I'm aware. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And then, how about, you know, where the town website was down um, and I was hoping, Bill, maybe you could give us an update of this, you know, later under the town manager's update. But, um, you know, did that all go OK with the online permitting while the town website was down? Anything that we need to think about there? Uh, Christina uh, Metcalf had come up with a great idea to have a temporary, you know, here's what to do and uh, kept it running. So we were very fortunate that, yes, things were running. It didn't affect it. So went well. Great. Good. Any, any other questions uh, from the board? No. Yeah. Following up with uh, what Leah said, so Barry, you're not allowed to leave. Okay, we had, a building, we had a building inspector here for a really long time at one point. So, so please stick around. 
Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. I and I'll I think I'd be crazy to leave this town. You people are just people. It's great. You don't have any hidden agendas. You're all professional and you just you just want the what the common person wants and who could ask for more? It's like a big family working in this town hall. It really is. I'm looking at the clock, it's 20 minutes to eight, and I don't want to go home. <laughs> Barry, Barry, I hope your family is not watching this, especially your wife. <laughs> <laughs> Probably is. <laughs> we have a shorter commute now. Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. Well, you know, you can you can thank uh, Bill um, and uh, jo uh, Mike. Uh, those two guys. Let me tell you, uh, I, I hear rumors that that Bill's uh, getting ready for retirement and. Uh, I, geez, I, I I hope he sticks around a lot longer than what I'm hearing. So uh, they they've making every day here for me comfortable uh, and and helping me along uh, uh, you know enormously every day. So uh, uh, Christina and Katie, my staff, everybody and anybody is helpful. As everybody knows, this is my first uh, position as a building commissioner. So I'm, I'm learning as I, as I go, you know, to be a commissioner, um, you know, and like a meeting like this and, uh, but uh, uh, nothing but help all day long, every day. And, and uh, it, it's super support. It's fantastic. And uh, I, I want to thank everybody uh, for helping me. Uh, even the littlest of thing, here's the pencil sharpener, you know, just every little thing. Uh, they're there, and, and the support is, is great. And thank you all. Oh, thank, thank you, Barry. And, and I didn't threaten him before I said this tonight, so just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, so thank you, Barry. That was very nice of you to say that. But Barry's, you know, Barry's been a joy to work with since he came here as well. I just want to say thanks for, for being here. Um, yeah, we had a little bit of turnover. It was just unfortunate set of circumstances, and and uh, sometimes it happens. So we had a, we had a couple situations where, on both instances, there were personal situations that evolved that they, they had nothing to do with us it was just they, their family situations changed and they needed to try and address them and so what had happened in life it was a life-changing situation in both cases so um so i think you know it just it, it was a i guess it was barry's time to to come here and i'm, I'm really glad he did so that's worth that well so we're glad, glad he's here thank you barry thank, thank you. you for being with us tonight and your presentation Sure. Uh, is there anything else anybody wants to ask me related? Oh, I think that's it. Uh, so, so my wife didn't expect me to be home soon? Well, no, we can tell you that you have to stay online here and listen right up until the end. How's that? <laughs> okay. Let me know. You don't, you don't have to, Barry. Just, <laughs> just make Thank sure you, you pick up the extra gallon of milk on the way home and all the <laughs> stuff that goes with that, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. About that and the vitamin B. Yeah, there you go. All right. Good night, Barry. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night, Barry. All right. Thank, Thank you. All right. Next up is the uh, annual town meeting uh, warrant review uh, bill. All right. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. So we have um, um, in this warrant, um, we have a total of 22 articles for consideration. Um, the 22 articles uh, we had up until Friday, we had actually 20 articles. We had two citizen petition articles, which I'll get into uh, later later tonight, uh, later after I make the presentation on the first few. So if you just follow along with me, um, the right now that the meeting is still planned to be held on on the uh, on the tenth tenth uh, of May, which is the the second Monday in May, which is typically our, our time to do that according to uh, the way things function here in Foxborough, and also um, that. Right now, we, we just—I just had a very initial conversation with 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 Bob Cutler about the location, and right now we, you know, we think it's going to still be at the high school, but there's been quite a bit of discussion in the region about doing outdoor meetings, things of that nature. But um, we we haven't really explored those options fully. We just had the conversation today for the first time, so um, but right now it's it's fair to assume that the meeting will still be at the uh, at the at the high school as it was last year. Um, so the um, the the first three articles are standard articles, uh, annual town elections, town reports, and reports of committees. Uh, those are, are not actionable items by by the town meeting. They just but they are required uh, uh, content for the for the warrant itself. So they will be uh, the first actionable item is really the operating budget. 
Um, and that is something that we're currently working on. I'll have an update of that and where we stand with that process uh, right after this uh, right after this discussion. The CIP budget is uh, something that will be, uh, act, be uh, is actually included in the budget document itself. So you, you'll see if you look through the document itself, it's already in there. But that won't be uh, reviewed for the first time until uh, the, the first week in March, uh, when we typically do a meeting uh, on a Saturday to, to meet with everybody about their requests. Um, there are a number of requests this year. That doesn't mean we're actually going to be able to fund them. In fact, there's been quite a bit of thought about whether or not we would even recommend postponing a lot of them until the fall uh, because of the fact we want to make sure that where our, our financial position is and that we can support uh, some of those without, um, you know, while postponing them to another year. There are some things that we really need to look at seriously, and that's school buses, uh, because I know that that's something that they like to replace annually. And, um, and I know that the, the, the technology pieces are important to keep up with, especially in the environment that we're in right now with, with COVID-19 and, and the limit that people working from home and remotely and et cetera. So it's, those are things that we really have to take a look at, but uh, most other th items will probably be things that we'll look at maybe so we can push off into the fall, maybe do something in the fall, in the fall town meeting. Um, the revolving fund for the annual spending limits, uh, there's several revolving funds that are located, uh, that are in the in the town, throughout in the various town departments. That's something that we set limits to every year. It's an annual annual article for consideration. It's not a surprise there, um, and so that that's something that's that's something that we would we would do every single year. The amendment to Article 23 of 2019. That's a case where where this was a um, this this is a borrowing article which uh, was done for the uh, water. I think it was the water project, the water water tank project. Which is um, it's it's a, the the act the article itself is fine. The one thing that the uh, that we cannot do though is that when you when you receive proceeds through a bond sale, uh, we'd like to roll that into the actual um, proceed uh, into the actual issue itself and actually helps helps to reduce the long term liability of the of the of the of the sale itself. So it actually reduces the cost. And so we like to do that, but unfortunately, the language wasn't contained in that original article. And so we're actually just correcting that piece of it. So there's no change to the article itself other than to include the language, which allows us to roll in the proceeds from the sale of the uh, bond issue. Uh, the steelwork is contract A and contract B. Those are the next four contracts of contracts that are under consideration that are under being negotiated presently. It's entirely possible we may not get, get to all those for consideration, but we're putting them in now. Just so that we can, and as well as the Boyden contract library as well, like Boyden library contract. So those five, out, five uh, uh, collective bargaining agreements, which we anticipate will be ready, but not necessarily, uh, but not guaranteed to be ready at this point in time. Um, we have a singular wireless um, situation where the singular wireless uh, has approached the town about um, renting space off the public safety tower at the public at the public safety building. Uh, Ed will probably recall, recall this, that we did that with AT&T a number of years ago. Uh, well, uh, Singular approached us because they need similar space. And so what we did was we put it out to bid um, and they came back and they were the only bidder at the time. Uh, but they gave us, uh, they, they'll, they'll actually give us, uh, I think it's like $25,000 a year towards the rental of the space. So it's a, it's a revenue uh, piece for us. But we, in order for us to do that, because it is town property, we do have to, uh, we do have to get the permission from town meeting to do this. So it's uh, something that we uh, are seeking permission to do. Uh, the land transfer from the town is um, is the article uh, involving, um, I believe this is the, the one inv involving the, um, let me just go to it because I, I'm just trying to remember which this is, there's a couple that we have to do. Um, let me see here. One off of Oak Street. Yeah, this is the one off of Oak Street. So this is the, the vote to authorize the board to convey land parcel total off of Oak Street, shown as parcel three. And what we plan. This is the um, yeah, this is for the conservation commission. So um, there this is a um pertaining possibly 29 29.97 29 acres to the conservation commission to hold said property as, as a butterfly habitat. This is something that the uh, it's um, it's land transferred to them so that we, so the land cannot be developed into the future. It's, it actually puts it into a, a, a effectively a conservation restriction. Is that where Camp Lincoln Hill was? 
Oh, on Oaks Street. It's got to be if it's 29 acres. Uh, it's it's close to that area, yes. Close to that area. Right. And is it normal that they'd have a stipulation like a I've never I've never seen the butterfly habitat. This is a rare because it is such a rare, it's it. a rare it is, believe it or not, it's a rare habitat. So it's one in which um they they've actually researched this to the point where it actually is one of the most one of the most rare habitats anywhere in the state. So it's one of these areas that they like they like to uh to keep in that in that condition. State actually, I believe, weighed in on this too, uh, and asked us to, to consider that. The land transfer from the water department is the uh, is uh, is to see if the town will both authorize the board of water sewer commissioners to transfer and convey a parcel um, off of Oak Street, containing approximately four point one acres, shown uh, on a parcel plan law approval not required plan. This is another piece of that land off of Oak Street um, that uh, the water commission. Uh, needs to, to convey uh, back to the town uh, from the water department to the to the uh, to the town for uh, similar to the butterfly. It, it's part of the part of that land as part of the butterfly habitat. This is something Chris Chris Gallagher uh, had indicated to us that this is something that they've been trying to protect for a while, and it needs to be done and put in, into this kind of. Uh, it needs to be transferred to the town in order for them to do that. Uh, Article sixteen is the stretch energy code. Um, now, this goes back to, I think the board will, require, will, will remember that we actually had a visit from a resident in town who was interested in, in town pursuing the Green Communities Act. And, and, for and uh, this, is, uh, this is another step in the direction of towards achieving that. Uh, the Stretch Energy Code is a requirement of, of the Green Communities Act. And, and Foxborough is actually one of the lagging communities and not that has not done this, um, become a, a, a Green Communities Act. Not because we weren't interested in doing this, because a lot of the things that we, we had already done in town, uh, we had already done a lot to actually put, this, to put the town in a good position to, um, to reduce energy costs, building very efficient buildings, things of that nature. So we had already done a lot of the things required of it, but we just, we, we're trying to pursue it because we didn't become eligible for grant programs uh, under, the, uh, under the Green Communities Act. So this is one of the requirements of that is that we have to adopt the stretch energy code, which by and large there is, is now adopted almost statewide by many communities throughout the Commonwealth as a standard for uh, for building. Um, I could have actually had Barry away on this, but it's actually pretty common. Uh, article, a, seven, article 17, I'm sorry? That's a Board of Selectmen one, not like a planning board code. That's correct, yeah, because it would come under, because it's a stretch energy code actually comes under the uh, board of the building department, not the not the planning department. Okay, so that would only be like the, building 50, code. the 50 percent vote, then not the two thirds due to the type of. Um, that is a 50 yeah, 50 50, I believe. Well, we'll we'll we haven't reviewed all these with town council yet, but we'll 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 get the actual uh, quantum of vote for each one to be sure about that. But I do believe it's a um, it's a general bylaw change, if anything, not a not a not a two not a, not a, uh, a zoning bylaw which requires a two thirds, which would be 50 50. Uh, the sewer district revision is just adding uh, 96 Mechanic Street to the uh, to the sewer system. Is something the board recall recall will does we do every single year, and that is to add um, you know the uh, the amount of, of, of new uh, new properties to the system and it requires action autonomy to include them into the district. Uh, the floodplain overlay district is um, is a new bylaw. It's actually quite lengthy. Um, it was actually recommended to us by the uh, by the by the uh, by the uh, by the uh, what is it the the federal um, the, uh, the Corps of Engineers uh, that actually uh, oversees a lot of the, the floodplain work, and this is something that they had recommended to us as uh, as a new consideration. Um, I'm not the expert in this one, quite honestly. Um, I think it's something that Paige would actually weigh in on and help explain to you. But it's um, as you can see, it's very detailed. It's very uh, it's a much more comprehensive bylaw than the one we currently have. All right. Um, Moving on to 18, 19, uh, 19 is, is, uh, is actually just cleaning up the historic district boundaries. Uh, there was a, there, it was found there was a couple of errors in the boundaries. And so those are just, this is, this is just uh, cleaning up the boundaries of the map itself. 
This is not changing the map, changing the, the boundaries at all. This is this is something that just this is a correction to the map, just to make sure that the the map that you see is accurate. Um, Article twenty is is a correction to table of uses for assisted living, and that's to see if the town will vote to amend three point six one point six um, to make turn that into a to allow assisted living facilities to be located in the town. Um, Living, uh, we only have one such facility. That's the Doolittle Home currently, um, and that's to clarify the uh, the need for for this uh, and other in other areas of the town as well. Um, acceptance of Congdon Way as a public way is Article Twenty One, um, and that is uh, that was uh, that was added. So we actually have twenty three articles now. I apologize for that. We, Condon Way is uh, a, a last minute uh, submission by the planning department because that road is now ready for acceptance. So we can actually accept it as a public way in Fox Grove. Article 20 is a citizen's petition, which was submitted Friday. Uh, this looks to be identical to the language that was submitted uh, a couple of years ago by a, by a, uh, a sitting ADCOM member. And then, um, but which was rejected by Tom Meeting at the time. I, it's, been, it's interesting because no, there has been no discussion of this on any level that I can think of, that I've heard from anyone as to why <clears throat> this is being resubmitted. Um, so I'm trying to determine how this how this got here, but uh, and why the concerns? Because because um, the way it was turned out the last meet, last time meeting was that the system was working as well as could be. Uh, there really wasn't any concerns about the way the system was working, so it couldn't be identified as as a concern as to why things were doing, or if they were working incorrectly, or if there was a problem. And so, um, again, I'm not sure why this was being resubmitted for consideration. I think that was a close vote, though. I don't think that I don't think that was a uh, a runaway that it wasn't accepted. No, but it was it was actually a significant difference, though. It was it was probably it wasn't a close vote, as I call it. It was close to about I think it was about a 70 30 vote. It was a pretty it wasn't that close. It was. Um, and, and I think, you know, there was a number of, Glenn, to, do, to you, there was quite a bit of discussion about it, and there yeah. was a lot, of, a lot of debate about it, but I don't think it really, in the end, it was a close vote. I, but you know what, I think, I think the final vote took place on the second night of town meeting, where not as many people showed up either, I, be, I believe. Mm -hmm. so I mean, you I, know mean why, I know, I, know you, I mean, I mean, I know, this, know didn't, this didn't come back from, from the same person who brought it, um, but I mean... But, I, but do you, I, know, we, do you know why it was brought an email, back? So there was a list of people. Um, right, right. No, but nobody affiliated with it last time. I noticed that. So yeah. that's the reason I, I'm just curious as to why, if there was a concern, what was the concern so that we can try and address it for them? Or, because, oh, you yeah. know, as, as you look at this process, this would actually essentially add a fourth review committee to this process. Because currently you have the, you have the, uh, you have the, the capital planning committee, which is established by the charter. Then you have the, the, it gets submitted to the Board of Selectmen for consideration, and then it gets considered to the Ad Comp for consideration, and then it goes to town meeting. So you have three different committees look at those, those things, and the, even the people that, these are all, these are all three are recommendations to town meeting. The only board that gets to vote on it is town meeting. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not sure why the need for the fourth review going in there, if there was a concern, it hasn't been conveyed to us as to what that concern is. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. So uh, going back and then find, moving on to Article 23, this is one which um, we, you know, we've reviewed this one closely and we, we don't disagree with the, with the action being requested here. The, in fact, um, the, only, the only question is whether or not this is the only way that should be done is to resolve this because it is a, an amount of money that, um, that, that should be conveyed back to the individual um it's it was determined that this uh this person was taxed in error and I, i'll be honest it's the first time i've seen this happen in 37 years i've never seen a, a, such a, re, uh, a situation occur so it's very very extremely rare that you'd see something like this happen so we do agree with the action the question is is this the right action to be done and near as i can tell it is there it is certainly one re re remedy of doing this and we're not sure if there's another way and we're, we're researching that right now to determine that so um so it, it it wouldn't be something necessarily would have to be done by town meeting but certainly the action could be done and looking as if it can be done in another way 
All right. But if it doesn't, if there isn't another way, then certainly, you know, the article stands and, and would have to be acted by town meeting. If, in fact, we find another way to resolve it without having to go to town meeting, um, then the action of town meeting would be to just to to uh, uh, to take the matter uh, and, and definitely postpone it for consideration. So since there'd be no no action needed for the for the town meeting at that time. OK. All right. Those are the uh, the articles for consideration. Hey, um, um, question, Bill, are we going to, last we talked, we were going to do a special town meeting within. Yes, that, that's, a, that's, that's, that's the next that. action up before you, Chris, is, okay. is to look right. at that. Okay. okay, then let's just go back to Article 23. Bill and I talked earlier tonight. I, I, I want to try to resolve this before it even gets to town meeting as soon as possible. If, if this person right. has, in fact, been paying taxes for... 12, 13, 14 years on a piece of property they never owned um, came on us as a town for doing it. So we got to rectify that quickly. Yeah, there, there are two steps to this, though, Chris, and just so, and, and thanks for, for pointing in on this. But the, there, first is, is that we've, we've asked the individual to file for an abatement with the assessor's office. Um, I actually discussed that possibility uh, several months ago. And, but now is the time to file for an abatement because it is February. And anybody has a, has a concern about their tax taxes, mm -hmm. their value, or if they're being ta being taxed improperly, they can certainly request the uh, the, the assessors to, to to consider that. So the request, so so we've asked this this individual to take care of that. She has in fact filed that, um, which is uh, which actually was filed as early as today. So uh, that step is that means that 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 will take care of the issue. So it doesn't continue to be a problem going forward. The second part is to, is to, is to consider the issue of, of the wages of the uh, payments going back. And um, so that's the part we're still trying to resolve. Okay. And Bill, this goes, you know, way back. Right. So I just hope with the, with the abatement, you know, it, like, I just think if I was asked to, you know, provide proof or something, you know, yeah. that's going to be nearly impossible. Um, you well, know, not, not, not necessarily, because we actually do have the payments going back. Uh, the, the payments received by the town going back to 2006. Okay, all right. So, good. so we did we did uh, actually have that information in our records. So uh, that part of it is, uh, yeah, I agree with you that normally that would be a difficult thing, but we did have it in our own records that the person did make the payments. Yeah, I just I think that we don't want to see the person have to jump through hoops um, right. because I yeah, think yeah, everyone kind of knows. Yeah. Yeah, we're not trying to do that. We uh, we're trying to try to remedy the situation. Like I said, it's, it's something I've never witnessed before ever. So it's, um, and it actually preceded myself and anybody, actually, I think most people in, in that are working in the finance department now. So I think the, the the situation is something we want to fix and move on from it. Yeah, I, th I think we all had the same feeling when we read that, that we want yeah. to make this as uh, painless as possible for the, for the citizen. Correct. Um, <clears throat> so unless there's any other questions, we're going to move on to uh, the special town meeting um Leah you had a, a little chat you have a good point I think uh right now uh Bill would be a good time to re-explain uh why this um uh, the special town meeting sure. how we're going to function that rolling that into the town meeting uh and the differences between the two one being a bylaw and the other being uh set uh forth by us the selectmen and how all right, so and how all that timing will work because someone asked me about it today and quite frankly I could not explain it so like really okay. basic back back to foundation. All right, so so here's how this works: is that there is essentially there was it was a special town meeting within the annual. Is uh, the way this functions is that it's a separately called meeting by the board. The uh, the the, the annual town meeting is is more or less laid out by the town's bylaws and charter, where it says that the selectmen shall shall hold an annual meeting, which which shall be conducted in the it's second Monday of May. And, it, and it's one of where the town's uh, business is conducted in which we, we annually address the annual budget, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the fiscal year budget for the upcoming fiscal year, the fiscal capital plans, you know, by, uh, changes to bylaws, et cetera. That's the annual meeting that, that is set forth by the bylaws. Now, the, the, the other meeting, which is a special town meeting, is, is called strictly by the Board of Selectmen. Now, uh, it, a person could call for it, could ask for it for a special town meeting to be called. There'd have to be a petition before the board of selectmen to do that. Uh, extraordinary situation usually doesn't happen. Uh, does again, none of those rare situations that occurs. But you have in this case, uh, we're asking for a special town meeting because we didn't hold one in the fall, as everybody recalls. We didn't do one this year. So 
we have three or four items that really should be resolved for this current fiscal year. And the only way you can do this is, is to hold a special town meeting within the, within the annual. So, um, so what happens during that is, and what happens is that you actually have a separate set of, of people. People will be enrolled effectively twice for the meeting because one for the annual, one for the special. It'll be held the same night. But what will happen is the moderator will effectively adjourn the, they'll call the annual town meeting to order. And then he will effectively adjourn the annual town meeting to hold the special. Um, I'm not quite, it hasn't been, I've never seen it done here, so I don't know how he plans to do that. That will be entirely his call. But I do think usually you see it happen in the, in the first, you know, first few minutes to get the special out of the way. And then, and then we move on to the annual town meeting itself. The annual town meeting business is for the next fiscal year. A special town meeting would be to, to address issues in the current fiscal year. So this is for 2021 fiscal year 2021 issues, and you have have with contained with that that we know of right now four articles for consideration. Three of them are collective bargaining agreements for this current fiscal year, the police department and the and the two um, steel worker contracts, and then also there is there is a revolving fund that the need had was established during the year due to COVID-19, and that was for uh, computer repairs uh, through the IT department as well as for uh, for vaccinations, so that we, so that the fire department could actually collect money for doing vaccinations on certain case, on several cases. So those are the, the, the two needs that we uh, four needs that we have within the special town meeting that will occur. Um, again, that what they, what has to happen there is that the board of selectmen would would effectively call for a special town meeting, which I do recommend that you do. Uh, that you open the warrant tonight, and that you close it uh, at your next meeting, which is on May second. And that uh, and articles for consideration should be submitted no later than four o'clock on May second. That way, the board can consider those items at your meeting on, on May second. March second. Uh, March second. I'm sorry. March second at your next meeting. Okay. Uh, I think Bill, you did a perfect job explaining it. Lee, are you comfortable with that? Yeah, I like how you. I was honestly worried about losing people and having the two meetings in one night. I mean, the the, the annual is a long warrant, so I like mm -hmm. the idea of doing the special one first and kind of getting it out of the way. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't sure why we didn't have a draft of it, but since we're opening it tonight, that makes right. sense now that you've explained that. So, you know, if we're going to close it next week, I assume we'll just see the draft before we close it next week, like we're seeing this one now, right? right. Exactly. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, what, what, what people theoretically could 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 submit something right up until the right up until the the uh, this this the uh, right up until four o'clock on the on the day of that you close it. Um, it's interesting too that both selectmen have the ability have a little more leeway, including articles on the warrant but, or the special. With an annual, there are a lot of stand, standard ones that get get included, um, and, and also uh, the two petitioned articles go on automatically. Uh, because that's just the, that's the way the, the law is structured. So, if you uh, have a petition article, they go on they go on automatically. Now, if you want a, a special an article to go on a special town meeting, requires more signatures. Um, with an annual, it only requires ten. And I think it's like a hundred signatures for a special town meeting, if I'm not mistaken, for an article for yeah. a special town meeting. Hey, question: If it is our um, um, town meeting to call a special, can we? Mm -hmm. You had said that you know you're not sure how the moderator is going to do it either at the beginning or sometime. Can we specifically have it like the regular town meeting starts at seven thirty? Can we call this special town meeting for seven o'clock? Um, you could ask for that. I did, I think what would happen is you still have to call. You have to you, have, you still have to convene the annual town meeting first. Okay, how that works? Okay, so oh, all right. you follow me? So so yeah. I think yeah. But no. Um, and that typically starts at seven thirty. All right. So, um, so I do think though that, um, and you know, it's possible. You maybe it's a good idea to bring Frank in to talk about the logistics of it because I've never done one here, and I don't, I don't really, I want to steal his thunder in this one because it's really his call and how he runs the meeting itself. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but I do think though that you do, you have the authority over the warrant itself and what gets included in the warrant and the calling of the meeting itself. But the the operating operations of the meeting are strictly within the, the guidelines of the, the moderator's uh, role. All right. Yeah, I would check with him then to get it all ironed out. And yeah, maybe they could even that. come to the to the Mar March second meeting because you know there was some confusion last year about sure. the opening and closing and posting, and now we're in this 
weird situation that makes it confusing yeah. anyway. So I think it would be a good idea to invite yeah, them. Not a, bad, not a bad idea. We can so, include if, if so do we, we can make it. With that being said, do we even have to open it tonight or can we wait until the March 2nd one? Well, the reason why I recommend you open it tonight, um, Chris, is because it's a timing issue. You still have to provide adequate timing for, for, the, for the review of the warrant articles before the ADCOM. And, and there's, they're also reviewing the, the annual at the same time. So I, I don't want to I don't want to squeeze their time if we can help that. OK. All right. So, um, Steph, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to open a special town meeting warrant within the May 10th, 2021 annual town meeting on February 16th, 2021, and for the special town meeting warrant to close on March 2nd, 2021 at 4 o'clock p.m. Second. And just under discussion, we so we have verified that with Frank and Bob that this timing is works. Remember how last year we like opened it or closed it, and then we had to go back and fix something. So we yeah, have... no, that 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 had to do with the annual time. It had nothing to do with this. Nothing to do with the special. So the the, the special it, we just the, the posting of the warrants are two separate article, two separate processes. So we'll continue to treat this as two separate processes. But the way that this typically runs, Leah, is that there's one meeting within the other. So that's how that's the only way you can really do it. You don't really hold it on a separate night. Um, it's usually done within the same the same night. Or if you know if if anything goes it gets extended, it's usually the annual gets extended uh, beyond the uh, the second beyond the first night if there isn't enough time. All right. Yeah, so that don't make sense. I guess what I'm asking is, so we have can we have talks to Frank and Bob about what we're doing. I, I have not specific. I, I, Bob and I talked about the the special uh, today briefly, but we did not talk about the logistics of it. And it, you know, if there's any concern about that, that certainly can be. Can be addressed at the meeting next uh, on May second, March second, but the call opening and closing of the warrant is is purely within the board of selectmen's call. That's purely within your role. Oh, we we will clean it up, Leah. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm not, not, where, where it, it would be almost like if we if we didn't open it if we opened it too late. That's right. right. So we were better that's to right. do it tonight. Exactly. So, so time wise, we're good. I, yeah, I, that's right. Yeah, the, the action for you tonight is entirely appropriate. I don't have any concerns about that. If, if if there's any concerns about the logistics of it going forward, that's a conversation we want to have with Frank and, and Bob to make sure we don't run into any issues. Okay. All right, roll call. Chris, yes. Stephanie, yes. Mark, yes. Ed, yes. Leah, yes. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right. Um, uh, here we go. Uh, uh, Bill, the uh, FY22 budget and timeline update. All right, so thank you. So I think um, I am responding to this because there was there apparently was some confusion based on some of the comments that were made at the at the ADCOM meeting last week. And I think it's important to sort of clarify that the, the board of selectmen have not voted on any of the have not voted on the budget yet. They, they, you have, you have heard it, you have considered it, you have looked at it, but you have not taken any action on it. Your action officially comes uh, later on. So let me just say what right now we're at, we're in the week of February sixteenth, the fifteenth, sixteenth. The next um, action before the town right now is a CIP request I reviewed and distributed to the CIP committee, and uh, we already have that information. We already have that information out to the committee itself. Um, so that's just that's just the deadline for getting it out to everyone so they have it. Um, the Wednesday the twenty fourth, the advisory and lay, advisory liaisons and committee committee will review uh, the budget request. They've already been doing that. Um, the on Saturday March sixth, the capital improvement committee will meet to review the requests. On Wednesday March uh, on Tuesday March 9th, the board of selectmen. Uh, Board of Selectmen will review the CIP request. I think we're going to have to push that to um, a week ahead because we're actually where that's that's that week is actually that's off a week by the fact that you're you're meeting on March second. So you're probably going to meet on March sixteenth. Will be your next meeting, uh, which which would then push the advisory committee to review on the seventeenth. Okay, so. Uh, they could stay. Could theoretically, you both could theater. They could start earlier than you. There's no uh, necessarily no no particular issue as to why 
you, you have to do it in that particular order unless the committee wants to hear, hear, your, hear the board's position on it. Um, Friday, March uh, 26th, the comprehensive balanced budget document was prepared and distributed. Um, on March 30th, the selectman's final recommendation of the budget. So the board, the, the board doesn't even vote on the budgets until March 30th. So I, I just think, want to be clear about yeah. yeah, I think just, you know, I'll, I'll, I don't know if everyone, did everyone have a chance to watch AdCom last week or not? I, I know that everyone may not have. So, so here's kind of what happened. They were talking at AdCom and I don't think it was intentional, but there was direction given to the AdCom that the Board of Selectmen had had a meeting and we took a vote to have a, the two, to keep the budget at the two and a half percent increase. Yeah. So, you know, my feedback coming out of that was that's not necessarily true. We had the budget summit where mm -hmm. we talked about it, but um, what was presented to AdCom, you know, remember two years ago where we were presented, you know, we can either cut, we can have level services or we can expand services. It was almost right. presented to AdCom like what had happened last year, it happened this year. And I just wanted to clarify to AdCom and to everyone, you know, that we had not taken a vote to give a direction on the budget. I think that, you know, I understand Bill thinks that's, you know, it's the only way to kind of go right now, um, you know, given where we're at, but it's just, it's kind of more clarification on what actions the board of selectmen have taken thus far rather than the timeline. And I think if there is going to be a change to the timeline, we need to like see it in writing as we're just like rattling through dates. It's hard to follow without it, you know, in front of us. Um, so that was really the clarification that I had asked for, you know, to go in front of AdCom is that, you know, we have not, we did not take a vote and give direction on a percentage for the budget. Well, I, I, the one thing I will just just respond back to is that that was the reason for that meeting was to get direction. If I, and, and I didn't hear anybody push back on that direction. I offered the direction to everybody and nobody suggested anything different. So I guess my, I guess I, I was, I, the assumption was that there wasn't any other direction to go with at that evening. Cause I, cause the reason why I have to hold that meeting is to give direction to the, to the, to the budget preparers, which is the union. I mean, the, uh, the employees uh, are the department heads who need direction so that they can prepare their budgets accordingly. So that's what we did. And we, and we followed that guideline effectively um, as you saw from the results. And actually I'm, I'm, I can actually talk about that a little bit more. We actually had some good news on some budget fronts as well um, that we think we can actually, you know, that some of that, um, some of, we can actually reduce some of our reserve use of the money of money come, that we had applied towards the budget can be reduced. Uh, because uh, some of the numbers came in better than we thought. Uh, actually, right now, I think we're we came up we've come up with at least another three hundred thousand dollars in savings uh, from the from the original budget proposal. Uh, we think that may be more, so that's that's a good thing. But I, I do think we're in better shape than we thought. And I think what you just said is more accurate than than okay. what was discussed and presented on AdCom. That there right. was a meeting with the board of selectmen. We were presented three options and took a vote. You know, right. we had a budget summit. You presented it to us. Um, and it was the same meeting that AdCom was on. So I just, just, I didn't want AdCom to think that there was another meeting that they oh, weren't part of where we took yeah. a vote, which is how I felt it was represented on AdCom. Understood. Yeah, there, there was no other, there was no other meeting other than the one, I mean, we, yeah, I did present the budget to the board back in January. You know, I, I, I you, you get to see the budget first before anyone else is the, else does. So we, we actually presented the budget to you in Jan, on January 26th, if I'm not mistaken. And um, again, there was no indication that there, there was anything that we should we should move any changes at that point. Um, and you know, if if there are things that people want to discuss, we, you should discuss them sooner rather than later because obviously that has an implication upon where we are. But but I do think you know the the, the where we are is about as good as we're going to we're going to get until something. A couple things happen. One is the fact that we get back to normal. And, and two, we, we get some federal aid, which is entirely possible. And I'll be talking about, about that later on tonight. And then the, the, the third thing is the fact that uh, if we see some other, the only, the only number that we don't know about th at this point in time is the uh, South, Southeast uh, Regional School budget, which we have budgeted at a, at a, at a relatively high 7.5% increase. But that, that is the number that came in last year. So we're using that same increase. We're hoping that number comes in less. If it does, 
then we then we have additional savings to present to, to everyone as well. Okay. I think I think going forward, I think you guys all know that I'm a, a process stickler. And I think every year we should have the same process where we have a meeting, we're presented the three options, we talk about them, and then we take a vote. You know, I know this year was a little different. We were on a meeting with all three boards. It wasn't a meeting like this. Like we were mm. in a mode that we could not speak, like only the chairs could speak. We were in listen only mode. So it wasn't a mm. discussion that I think should happen every year. And I think we should just have the same process every year so that there is no, no confusion. Yeah, I think I think you're right. This was a different year, and this was not the year. This was more of a how do we survive this year mode, as opposed to looking at ways in which we can either, you know, and, and, and do we want to severely cut the budget? The answer is no, and because I think everybody wants to maintain services at least. I've never seen anything come differently from the town. They want to at least maintain the services we have, and the and the other thing is we certainly weren't going to grow the budget significantly because there wasn't any ability to do that. So this was sort of a unique year, year in which there really wasn't a, uh, there wasn't any really options other than what at least maintain what we got option on the table. And that's what we tried to do. Yeah. And I think, but, I mean, my personal thought would be, you know, the direction isn't necessarily to just dial the budget up two and a half percent every year. I know there's things we can't control, but, you know, right. to look at the savings and come up with the savings to dial the budget up the least amount as possible. So if we have to d dial up, you know, salaries, you know, maybe we, we pair back expenses without cutting services. And I think that there, I know it's easier said than done, but there are some creative ways. And I know, you know, in the goals we talked about to challenge every department to find savings, I think that will go a long way with the residents too, to let them know where each department has cut services. So, you know, that's a story that we need, that we need to tell. Yeah, and I agree. And I think that, you know, the budget does contain several areas where there's been zero increases. Um, and I think that's something that, you know, that story does need to get told because right now I, I, I don't want people to think that we're just willy nilly raise the budget two and a half percent because we didn't. Um, in fact, there were many cases where we raised it less than that um, because we were able to find ways to to uh, reduce costs. And if there was areas where salaries were where it could be reduced, we did that. Um, so it wasn't like we just carried the same number forward every single year. And added two and a half percent to it, so I think I appreciate you you raising it from that perspective. Yeah, so let's tell that story. You know, yeah. let's tell that story to everyone. You know, the yeah. success as well. Fair enough. That's fair. Well, and and I think I think too uh, as well. You know, even though you say it's a an odd year, Bill, I I still think that um, as a board, we didn't have that discussion. And um, even, even though, even if, so it was verbally said, so we're coming, you know, um, it, it, at that meeting at the summit, um, like Leah said, we weren't all in a room, you know, in, in the past I've heard, um, you know, you come before, um, you know, board before I was on it, uh, but come before the board and say, give me a direction. So um, I don't think, you know, because that didn't take place, um, I, I think we have to just answer to the people and I, I'm not suggesting any of this, but there's always something to do. There's always, there's always cuts. Um, you know, what makes me a little nervous is that we just keep digging into the free cash and, you know, I mean, and hopefully it will regenerate. Um, but so, you know, and because this is my first budget on this board. So I, I, I guess I, I didn't realize so we're not going to hear from department heads don't come in front of this board. Only if the board wants to, wants them to appear. I mean, it's, okay. I mean, they, they, you could see from the document itself, there was a pretty lean. The only area that really had to increase this year was the, was the fire department because they had, uh, they had the grants that, that ran out. So it, that, that would to maintain those off those firefighters. The rest of them were, were pretty low and pretty lean. Um, there weren't any, there's no new positions other than, like I said, that other than the grant positions, but those were already established positions in the town. Okay. So there's no new, no, no new positions. Yeah. Well, what, why I'm asking is it because mm -hmm. it, because, uh, let me look at, I'm thinking of everybody, because I think I'm the only one sitting board member now that has sat on advisory committee. Um, the process that happens there is so much more extensive and and I mean, you know, um, and I, I understand there's only five of us and, and to get everybody to, to be a liaison, because even on advisory committee, it's, it's, it's pretty extensive, but 
on, on their end, they have department heads are gonna sit down and they go over their entire budget and questions are asked back and forth. So it's just a little bizarre to me that we're asked to do the same thing that advisory committee is asked to do, which is to recommend this budget forward. And we don't, we don't hear any of that. You we, know? We're going to ADCOM. Yeah. So we go to ADCOM. I don't think we need to yeah. recreate the process. We just need to join ADCOM. Right. Oh, just, but, but, but I don't, I don't think, I don't think um, it, it happens very often. You well, know, actually, I mean, it does. It does yeah. actually. Yeah. You get, you get a lot of board members that, that attend. I yeah, think we're actually, I think we're actually lucky this year because it's televised for the first time. Yeah. So now I don't have to leave my house. I can watch it, watch it on demand. You know, you can go back yeah. and watch well, that, cable access. That, that's, that's the huge thing, you know, so certainly for a lot of us, but you know, I, don't, I know I've seen ad at quite a few ad ad com committee meetings and uh, last year and um, you know, I, it just makes it easier uh, for us to be able to uh, watch it on TV zoom in if we want to generally um I don't, I don't know about ed but myself and i'm certainly chris went to his share of ed con committee meetings too you sit and listen you know it's 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 it, from my point of view adcom's uh decision to ask the questions but i'm certainly gaining information by sitting there and listening to the banter back and forth um because i think uh, i'm sorry if it was leah or bill that that said it uh, it would be counterproductive to bring everybody back in front of us at the same time. I think it it, it means it's how important it is for us uh, to sit in or to at least now listen in, uh, especially to the important to the ones that you feel you need more information on. Maybe it's the fire. Maybe it's you don't need as much on DPW because you went through the the budget and there wasn't a lot there. Uh, you know, it's incumbent upon us. You know. Um, when I first came on the board and was told that, you know, there was only one meeting every two weeks that we had to, uh, you know, be a part of, you know, when you're on the board for a while, you realize, you know, there's possibly three meetings a week, especially this time of the year uh, that we're a part of. So, um, you know, I think a little bit incumbent upon us to listen in at, at ADCOM, um, you know, especially if it's a department, you feel that that more information needs to be garnered from. So yeah, there, you know, there's, Doc, my, my point isn't to, you know, to to say that this board isn't doing its duty, but I did sit on ADCOM for three years and up until now it being televised, not that many, not that many uh, board of selectmen were at those meetings to listen to 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 that. Um, and so I just I guess maybe I assumed it was done a little bit on this end. You know, and um, if people are watching this year, um, you know, if we're if individually, we're, you know, we're watching ADCOM to, um, you know, to, to hear the process. Yeah, I think that's great because I think this is a, an unprecedented year for us. But in the past, I, you know, I'm, I, I don't want to, well, I am going to disagree. There aren't that many board of selectmen that came to the three years I sat on ADCOM. There weren't that many board of selectmen that were there when the budgets were being discussed. So well, that's Steph, why I guess Steph, can everybody. I can I interject here? Because basically Absolutely. what you're what you're saying is if if we if a selectman doesn't go to ADCOM, they don't look at or question anything in the budget because there's oh, a lot no. of times in the budgets over the years that if I had an issue with DPW or fire, I would go to Bill, I would connect with Roger or whoever. So it doesn't have to be, you have to go to ADCOM to go through and review and be comfortable with the budget. Absolutely. And I would agree with you, Chris. I think I just thought maybe the process was a little bit different. That's all. I wasn't, I wasn't saying to, to be disrespectful to anybody on this board or any other board. I guess maybe the, the um, experience there with us all in the same room and asking the questions. And sometimes you don't think of a question, but someone else asks it. So um, there was no disrespect meant to anybody sitting on this board or any other board. I guess maybe I thought the process on this side was going to be a little bit different. That's all. That's really if, if I can just interject a little bit here, because I, I do think there's a couple things that, that have helped this year. And that is the fact that you effectively heard from every one of your department heads during the past year, because they've all appeared before you to present their their various departments and their operations. So if there were concerns about uh, their budget or anything like that, that's another great opportunity to do that. 
to mm-hmm. ask the questions then. I think I think what what I'm, what it's diff- there's a fine line between overkill and underkill. All right, and I'm trying not clearly not trying to underkill, but I but I don't want to overkill either. And in terms of how many times do you want to review something that we've already presented? So if there are questions still lingering, I'm always open to, to questions and answering those questions for you, or bring the the, board, the the group before you to answer those questions for you. That process never stops, and I think. I want to be clear about that, that, that this is still an open book and that we want to be able to tell the story, as Leah correctly points out, we should tell a good story when there's a good story. Um, and if there's a, if something needs to be corrected, let's correct it. Yeah. So I, 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 I've had no disrespect at all. No, I know that. No, and I'm not, I just, I'm not I think, taking it I as think a, maybe as I such. thought the process was going to be a little different because yeah, that's what, how it was, you know, sitting there. So, uh, no, no disrespect meant to anybody. No, I know that. I think this <laughs> is a good example tonight, you know, is we were mm-hmm. attending AdCom and heard something and now here we are, yeah. you know, talking discussing. without having to, you know, double dip and do the same thing twice. So, yeah, yeah. fair enough. Any other questions about that? That at all? No. Okay. It was a good discussion. Thank you. Um, Mike's not around, uh, Bill. He's not. So, um, so uh, uh, yeah. If you want to go right to my report, Mike is on vacation this week. Um, his, um, you know, he's been taking some time off with his wife, and I don't can't say that I blame him. So uh, it's a good week to take off. It's school vacation week, and she's off this week, so he's able to take some time off, which is good. So, just a, a couple things um, to remind to to uh, to point out to you. One is the uh, the fact that I have a letter that is um, before you um, relative to. I, I uh, the the federal aid. Um, yeah, I I provided you with a, with a letter um, the, uh, in, on uh, aid uh, federal aid support. So we the G, GFOA the government is that somebody got their camera on? It's not me. <laughs> not coming for me. Uh, so the, uh, the the we have a a federal aid request uh, a support support letter request that's coming from GFOA. That's the Government Finance Officers Association has has uh, became this sent this to me through Marie, and um, and so they've asked that that local cities and towns provide a letter of support to their congressmen and their two U.S. senators for consideration on, on the Fed, on the COVID nineteen relief package. Um, if you've been following the news at all, there's a one point nine trillion dollar package that's before Congress right now. Um, it was sponsored by the Democrats. Um, the, the, the Republicans have, have, are looking for a smaller package, but uh, right now the, the Democrats control the House and the Senate. So it looks as though the, 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 the $1.9 trillion package is gaining, gaining traction. Um, the letter of support here in Foxborough is for two, it's all for all three Democratic seats, uh, two, the three, two Democratic senators and one Democratic um, uh, uh, congressman. And as a result, um, this will be a, a vote of uh, support for those those uh, the sent from the board. I, I actually wrote it on behalf of the board, but signed it by myself you know, on behalf of the board. So I didn't want to send it without having you all look at it first. And I wanted to make sure you were okay with the, with the, with the message being sent in it. So before I sent it out. So I am, strangely enough, I do have a meeting with con- the congressman this Thursday. Thursday morning, so uh, for the first time to meet him, so he's actually going to be part of the uh, uh, the Chamber of Commerce breakfast in the morning, uh, which will be done through 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 Zoom, so it won't be an actual breakfast. But um, they're actually going to, you know, we're going to ch- get a chance to talk with them directly. So this is kind of timely in that respect to have that letter of support in place. So hey, I'm happy to take any questions if you have any. Yeah, Bill, just to clarify, are you going to send? three separate letters, one yes. to each of them? Okay. That's correct. Yeah, one to, right. one to each. Yeah, that's right. Okay. That's it. Other than that. Okay. Unrelated but related, um, I actually planned on going to that Thursday morning meeting. Do okay. we have any concerns about posting that? Like, do we need to make sure that we're all good? No, uh, that's, that's, it's being held by the chamber. And if you're just participating as a, as a member of the chamber, I think you're probably okay. I don't well, know if we got invitations as selectmen, so... I think everyone got got invited. So you did okay. So actually, to, attending something like that, which is a more or less a a, a business or social, but you're not going to be discussing town business other than you know I'll, I'll present the issues that we have. But in case anybody wants to, and you won't be debating anything as far as the meeting goes. So I think it'll be all right. Okay. Okay. 
Any questions about that? Okay. Uh, the second thing I had was uh, the, um, I actually have a, um, let me see, let's go back to this. Okay. Um, yeah, I've got three donations. One is for the COA, a $60 donation made to the COA. I have another one that's for the, uh, for the Foxborough Cultural Council of $70 and another donation of $100 uh, to the veterans uh, from the Knights of Columbus. Um, I, I can give you the names of the, the FCC, Foxwell Cultural Council was by for a, $70 from the tote, bug, tote bag fundraiser profits. It's from Ellen Cosgrove, Bridget White, uh, Sarah Hayden, Sidney Crisp, and Brian Burke. All right, and then, um, okay, and then, um, so and it, so, those three those are three donations that I had, and as well, um, I just want to announce to the board that the, uh, the I just received I just received paperwork from the cultural council today that we received a seventy two hundred dollar grant from the state for the annual um, arts council arts cultural arts, arts council grant from the state, and I'll be signing that uh, probably as early as tomorrow. Okay, That's all I have. All right, great. Any uh, selections update? Anybody? Um, just go ahead, Leah. Um, you guys have heard us update about the wayfinding signs for a while. Um, and we got some proofs and did some feedback. So I think those are going to finally go to fabrication, right? Bill, I think you weighed in on yes. those. Yeah, I did. I feel like we're in a, at a point now. I know you guys keep hearing this talk about, the updates, <laughs> but I really think we're there. We're ready to have them fabricated. And I would think we'll be seeing them up fairly shortly, you know, just right. depending whatever production time is. So more of that branding now that we have the banners uptown, these will be the signs that, you know, show where parking is and, and where town hall is and things like that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It should be, it should be a nice addition to the downtown. It should be. Um, last thing, maybe under Selectman's update, unless anybody else had anything else that this is uh, election time of the year. Um, uh, the uh, uh, election process is open. When does it close, uh, Bill? Close in about a month, as I, as I understand yeah. it. Yeah. I don't have the exact date, but I believe it's about a month from now. March 15th ish? March 15th. Yeah. Okay. But uh, anybody thinking there's a lot of seats that are open up across the board? Uh, if anybody's thinking, please get their paperwork in on time. Other than that, uh, Let's move on to uh, action um, items. Doc, actually, under that boards and committees, you know, we appointed tonight to the historic commission. Um, you know, and it took us a while to get our arms around that. So, Christina, that's something we should probably look at early too. And you know, if groups have open seats, we should probably, you know, make sure we advertise those as well. Because you know, sometimes I think people stay on these boards because no one else steps up. So if we let them know where the open seats are, maybe we can get more people involved, like like Sean tonight, who you know is kind of new to town and involved. Okay. Thank you. And just to let you know, the um, papers can be pulled March 15th and need to be signed up until 5 p.m. And there is no COVID provision for online signatures. So you do have to get those signatures in person. Just have people bring their own pen, clean the pens in between, but, and do it safely with masks. But it does need to be done in person. Okay. Thank you, Christina. All right, uh, Steph, agenda mm -hmm. item. Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to weigh in on that point, that last point that Christina made. That's actually an interesting point that, that, that Christina indicated, that there is no COVID uh, way around that, that people have to go and get in-person signatures. So it makes it more difficult. Um, that's a statewide limitation. and something that I, I intend to talk with, with Representative Barros when I see him this week to see if that can be addressed somehow, if there was a different way of doing it. I was actually, that concern was raised to me by another elected official in town and and, uh, and I, I said, you know, it's actually kind of interesting because you would think they've addressed most of these things that they would they would take a more more aggressive step in dealing with that. So, so people didn't come in, you know, person to person with people to try and get signatures. But um, but it, apparently it wasn't it hasn't been addressed. So, just want to make you aware of that. It's true though, because so I mean, for me last year, I mean, the whole election process was different because of the COVID, but. I had pulled my papers and got my signatures before thing everything shut down. So I mean right. that part right. was easy, but I mean we didn't ask people to hold signs. And not only that, like 
even at work because I'm working somewhere where people are coming in and signing charge slips, we're wiping pens down with, with, you know, so it's like for you to stand somewhere and hand someone a pen to sign your paper and then hand it to somebody else. And, you know, um, I would suggest if any, you know, if anybody um, is deciding to, to go that route, maybe bring a couple of pens or bring some, you know, wipes with you or whatever. Cause I mean, that's that whole touching and passing and, and whatnot. But um, yeah, I mean, I guess who, whoever thought we would be where we are right now, but yeah, right. it's not easy. Yeah. It's not an easy it's life. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. All right, uh, action items. Okay. We have a motion to approve tuition reimbursement to Detective Mark Bonnenberger in the amount of $1,125. Second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Chris, yes. Stephanie, yes. Mark, yes. Ed, yes. Leah, yes. Great job with the pronunciation on that one, Stephanie. <laughs> I looked at it a couple of times, though. <laughs> oh. That's not an easy one. Motion to approve the Board of Selectmen January 5th, 2021 meeting minutes. Second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Chris, yes. Stephanie, yes. Mark, yes. Ed, yes. Leah, yes. And then we have a motion to adjourn. Second. Roll call. Chris, yes. Stephanie, yes. Mark, yes. Ed, yes. Yeah, yes. Good night, everybody. Have a good week. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night.